Hey everyone. So I came across this picture recently and thought, firstly, that's weird. And secondly, hey, that reminds me, I took a selfie with the kangaroo, which then led to me looking for that picture and eventually finding this. That's right. So that's me, Mr. Ting, the one on the left. I'm um, saying that because I might sound a bit strange um, trying to record a video with a blocked nose, but hey, I shall persist. But if you don't know who I am, I'm Mr. Ting, and I'm going to attempt to explain something fairly tricky to you, something that I wish that I knew while I was in high school, only then when I was in uni, um, probably because it's pretty complicated. I'm going to try my best to try and simplify that and see if I can explain it to you because it's really, really useful when analyzing data and specifically um, when analyzing results in scientific testing. So what we're going to tackle is this question. When you've completed a scientific test, how do you know that the IV had a significant effect on the DV? In other words, how do you know that what you were trying to test, the, the independent variable, actually had an effect on your dependent variable, what you were measuring? So here are a co couple of examples. Um, uh, one example that I just made up, we're looking at, at the relationship between a person's height and their hand span. I just made up this data. Um, and we can see that when we graph the result, we get a scatter plot um, that looks something like this. Now, it looks to me like there is a relationship. And if I add, add a trend line, Excel does this. And I mean, it looks like, like there's some, some kind of relationships. It's not a flat line, there's a positive gradient. But how do I actually know that? Um, that this relationship is, is a strong one. Like how steep does this line actually need to be? How close do the dots need to be to the line? Is, is there any way of actually describing it more than just, you know, saying, I, you know, it looks like there's a strong relationship. Um, and then you, give up, you have other types of, of um, tests like, like this one where your independent variable um, is discrete. And again, how, how do I know that the, the difference is actually significant? In this case, I made up an experiment where um, I had two sets of uh, people, uh, 14 people each, I believe. Um, listening to music and then another 14 people not listening to music and then I came up with some results of like how long they took to complete a test. So I'm looking at the effect of music on completing a task and I mean it looks like there's a difference between these two bars. It looks like people who listen to music actually took longer to do the test and so in my discussion I might say oh yeah you know there was a difference but how do I know that there actually is a difference? Like how how different do the bars need to be for me to be able to say that, that, that the difference is significant? Well, enter statistics. There are actually really cool equations that can help us to determine if the difference is significant. Now, it's really, really important to actually know how these equations work, um, like so how you would calculate them. But that really is the realm of senior maths or, you know, university level statistics. What I'm going to show you today is how you can calculate these things using Microsoft Excel. Thank you, Excel, for including these in your programming. You are the best, and I'm going to show you today how it, it works. So, uh, this is what we're going to be looking at. How to use statistical tests to analyze data. Now, depending on the nature of the independent variable, there are two tests you can use, which I will introduce each one to you. The Pearson R test for correlation and the student's T test. That's right. Now, as, uh, just a couple of disclaimers. First, there are many variations of each of these tests, but we're going to be looking at the simplest version. And my second disclaimer, I am not a statistician. I am only a high school science teacher who's been to uni and have, has used these tests before. And, and I should say for the record, at uni, these tests take much more than a single video to you know explain and cover. So I'm really condensing it here. But yeah. Here we go. All right, test number one, <laughs> which I, you know, use a two for. Test number one, if your IV is continuous, that is, it's numerical, um, of course, you will be using, a, you'll be, you know, using a scatterplot or a line graph um, to show the data like I showed in Excel before. But the test you would use in this case is, is called the Pearson's Correlation Coefficient. Let's type that right. There we go. What a lovely word. <laughs> so what is the Pearson's correlation coefficient? Well, it is a test that provides a number, which we call the R value. And the R value measures, produces a value called the R value, uh, which measures how closely, uh, sorry, how closely correlated two variables are. Now that means um, how tightly linked or how you know how strong the relationship is between the two variables. Now let's say something about the R values. Um, the R value um, goes 
um, anywhere between negative 1 and positive 1. And well, let's change this to bullet points, where 0 uh, means there is no correlation. Uh, negative 1 means a complete negative correlation. And positive 1 means a complete positive correlation. By the way, the reason why I'm typing this out um, is so that you can um, uh, take notes so you can see kind of like what, what my thinking as I'm going along. There's quite a lot of stuff I'm covering here. So um, if you do want to no understand this stuff well, I do actually recommend that you you know screenshot the video or, or probably better if you typed the, uh, or wrote the notes out yourself. Uh, but now correlation, complete negative, complete positive. I kind of need pictures to describe this. Uh, so I'm borrowing uh, some pictures from this website over here. Um, and um, here is an example. So in this graph here, if we have our dots lined up so nicely that they make this you know, perfect, like they're all on that imaginary straight line, um, this perfect positive linear relationship, if we did the Pearson's correlation coefficient test, it will give us a value of 1, r equals 1. Now this almost never happens, but if you did have, if you know, did the test and it calculated and, you know, ba -ba 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 -ba, like spat out a number at the end and it's 1, you know that you have like perfect correlation. These two variables are perfect, have a perfect relationship, positive relationship with each other. If R is spat out as a negative one, that's the number that comes out after you know when the calculations are done. We have a perfect negative correlation, and it means you know still a very tight relationship, but one that goes the other way. So when x increases, y decreases. Yep. Uh, what would it look like if there's no relationship? Well, R would be zero, so that's in between negative one and positive one, and you might get something like this. That's kind of all over the place. You know, there's just it doesn't look like it's really going anywhere. If you had to draw um, a straight line, it would just go straight across, and so R would be zero. So those are the three examples. So of course, in real life, you, you um, you're not going to get you know positive one, negative one, um, or, or you know maybe zero. You'd probably get numbers like you know zero point four or something like that. What does that look like? Well, if you had a result that looked like this, this looks a bit more realistic, right? So this is looking at the relationship between a husband's age and a wife's age. And in this population, um, it produced an R value of 0 0.97. That is pretty high. So we would say, based on that, that's a you know that's a pretty strong positive relationship. It seems that husband and wives generally have the same age within uh, a relationship. And then you can have um, a graph that looks like this. So this is looking at grip strength versus arm strength. Uh, grip strength uh, that's like in, in the hand, and we get this, which looks like you know it's you know you draw a straight line that way. Um, and the R value in this case is 0 0.63. Now, how do you know what's strong and how do you know uh, what, what's not strong? Well, the rule of thumb kind of, uh, kind of is this. Let's see if I can type it out. Um, if you have a number that we say is you know, kind of like 0.7 and greater, we say it's a strong correlation. That's a pretty strong correlation. If you get, um, let's see, maybe I'll put this out. Uh, interpreting. R values. Yep. If you have um, the R value being between uh, 0 0.2 to uh, let's say 0 0.7, yep. Then we say it's kind of like a moderate correlation. I'm really simplifying here. And finally, if it's smaller than 0 0.2, we'll say that's basically no no correlation. I know it's not zero, but I mean that's a small number. This of course is all positive. You can just you know flip it around for the negative, and it it would be the same. So if it's like you know greater than uh, smaller than negative zero point seven, then it's a strong negative correlation. Cool. All right. So far so good. Now, how do we get this R value? Like I said before, that's a complicated calculation that you can use, but we're going to do it um, on Excel, and I will show you how. So let's go to my height or hand span. Um, experiment is there is there a you know good relationship between height a person's height and their hand span? Let's use a Pearson correlation coefficient test and find out how do we do that. Well, uh, so I'm just going to type in our value over here. So and then I'm going to calculate the R value in this cell. What I want to do first is call up um, the um, Excel's equation functions, and so I'm going to hit um, the equals key. And when I look over here, I get a whole list of things that I can choose from. Um, now my uh, correlation thing is not there, so I'm going to go to more functions. 
and I can scroll down here to look for um, correlation but what I'm going to do instead I'll just make sure that this is searching all is type in the correlation to see, uh, let's see if it finds it there did you find correlation you did and that's fantastic let's go to statistical and let's see if correlation is there there it is beautiful so Corel that's all it is okay <clears throat> and it's gonna ask me to select the two groups that I want uh, to compare so array one let's uh, select height done array two let's select hand span and here we go okay done and my r value is 0 0.74532 and probably could go longer but yeah so 0 0.74 or, or 0 0.75 that's pretty good that's greater than 0 0.7 so i would say that um this is a pretty uh, this is definitely a strong correlation why did I do that? And what's the purpose of this? Well, it's so much better than just using words and saying it looks like, you know, there's a correlation. I can now say that our value is 0 0.74 or 0 0.75, and that's that's wonderful. In fact, the way that I would write it out, um, so if I was um, following um, like APA standards, I would I would probably say something like this. Um, so uh, writing in, rep in the report, you would probably do something like this. You would say uh, a Pearson's correlation coefficient uh, test showed so in the discussion that there was oh actually in the results even a moderate uh, no in this case a strong positive uh, relationship between the two variables or I could say you know between hand and height span uh, <laughs> hand span and height yep uh, equals 0 0.75 that was my results great fantastic all right, so that's test number one, Pearson's correlation coefficient. Uh, the last thing which I should note is that this only works if um, if the relationship is a linear, that is like a straight line of best fit. So it doesn't actually work if the graph, you know, is best described by a curve that kind of goes up and goes down again. This only works for linear relationships such as this one, where there's kind of like a straight line, yeah, not a curve or like a sigmoidal kind of thing going on. Wonderful. Okay, so that's test number one. On we go to test number two. If you want to take a break, now's probably a good time. But if not, or if you've already taken the break, welcome back. Here we go to our second um, test. So, if the IV is discrete, <clears throat> discrete meaning that it's uh, well, categorical, it's not numerical, it's kind of like, you know, this and that, you can't join one to the other. Um, then you know you would use not a line graph but a bar graph to represent it and the test that we would use to see whether there's a significant difference between the two uh, is called a student's t-test <laughs> what great name hey. so what is a student's t-test well it's this oh um, sorry big disclaimer again before I before I do this um, there are a lot of things you actually need to assume to be true before you can even perform this test so I'm really really simplifying here but essentially uh, the t-test calculates the statistical probability of the null hypothesis being supported great done Cool, video finished. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I am actually literally scratching my head now um, because it's itchy, but I'm thinking you're metaphorically scratching your head because I mean, what does that even mean? That's not even English. Well, okay, there's this and stuff. Well, I mean, that's not even English. Like, what does that even mean? Let's go through a couple of things. So firstly, uh, what is a probability? If you know this, cool, a little refresher for you. Well, the probability, of course, is the, is the chance of, of an event happening, right? The chance of an event happening it can go anywhere from um, 0 to 1 in value which is kind of like 0% to 100% but we normally express it like this 0 to 1 where 0 is like it will never happen and 1 is it'll always happen so uh, a coin toss for example probability of a coin toss well that's 50-50 uh, you're gonna get heads or tails so we say that the probability or the p-value p-value is 0 0.5 yeah so it's uh, we are you gonna get hits from this coin toss well it's a p-value of 0, 0 0.5 um, how about uh, a dice throw you know what's the probability of you getting a six 
well, in this case, the p-value is going to be, uh, well, it's 1 in 6, which is 16.7%, or 0 0.167. So it's a lower probability than getting heads in a coin toss, you know, trying to get 6 in a dice throw. Uh, what's the probability of, uh, let's go like this, be nice. Uh, this runny nose is getting worse. All right, what's the probability of winning uh, the gold lotto, for example? Well, um, very kindly, Tats actually provides that information online, and the uh, odds of winning uh, the highest category is um, 1 in 8 million something. I calculated that for you because I am kind. So winning the gold lotto gives you a p-value of uh, is 0 point, wait, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.2. Little bit less likely than getting a 6 in a dice throw. Or, you know, heads in a coin toss. But hey, the probability is still there. Although, I do not recommend it. Gambling, bad. Alright, so that's what probability means. It, it means you, you're, you're going to get a number, and it's anywhere between 0 and 1. I am so sorry that I sound like so nasal, but let's plow on which is exactly what my nose is doing. It's like plowing on my face. Um, the second question is, uh, what is the null hypothesis? Well, the null, null hypothesis is, uh, null means none. So in a t-test, it means uh, it is that uh, the averages uh, from the two sets of data uh, are not uh, significantly different. Yeah, so remember that uh, when your IV is discrete, you're comparing in this case two things. Uh, the null hypothesis is that the there's nothing. There is like no difference. There's actually no I don't know benefit if you're testing the effect of something. There's just no difference between the two groups. Okay, so let's put it together. This means that the t-test essentially will give you a probability value, a p-value, of the the probability of the two sets of data not being different. <laughs> so it's a probability that the, that there's no significant difference. So if the p-value is high, so we're talking about uh, something close to 1, for example, near 1, like, you know, 0 0.9 or something like that, it basically means there is a high chance that the two sets of data, um, the two sets are not different. So it's kind of like, you know, the averages are pretty common. If the p-value is uh, low, so close to zero, so a small number like a 0 0.01 or something like that, it means that there is uh, a low chance that the uh, sets of data are not different, which is like a double negative, a low chance that it's not different, which basically m means a high chance that the two sets of data are different. Which means that if you're looking for a significant difference, we actually want a low p-value. And the magic number, we kind of have like this like magic cutoff number, and it's 0 0.05. Drum roll. If p-value, um, if the p-value is smaller, wait, smaller than small, yeah, I was right the first time, uh, smaller than 0 0.05, or equal or smaller than 0 0.05, there is a significant difference. That's the number that we're going for. Unfortunately, it's like 0 0.07, I'm sorry, 0 0.05 means 5%, by the way. 0 0.07, sorry, even like if there's a 7% chance um, that the data is different, it's still not enough, oh, sorry, that the data is not different, it's not enough, it needs to be 5%, that's our magic cutoff. Okay, 0 0.05 is what we're looking for. Again, I'm sorry, I know realize there's like a lot of crazy stuff going on here, but this is the main stuff that you need to remember, which is why I am bolding it. We want a p-value that is smaller than 0 0.05. All right, once again, let's pop over to Excel and see how we calculate this. So let's go to um, this um, second uh, random experiment that I made up. So listening to music, not listening to music. So like I said before, hey, it looks like there is a difference. It looks like when people listen to music, they took a lot longer. You know, average time of 52 seconds versus 38. But how do I know if that's enough? Like, is it like, do I calculate percentage difference? Do I like, does this need to be like 30? Is it still significantly different if it was here? So let's calculate it. I'm going to type in p-value over here. 
so I know what I'm looking at. And same thing as before. So hit the equals key, and then I'm going to go down to this drop, uh, drop down menu, and look for t test, which I have because I did it before. If it's not there, you're going to find it by the same way that we did before. So let's go so to statistical from here, and we're just going to scroll down until we find t test, t test, and there it is, t test, hooray! little bit more complicated because we've got four things to fill in this time but the first two are the same so array one refers to all of the numbers from uh, your first group in this case listening to music it doesn't actually matter which one I do first but so listening to music first great and then array two so this one not listening to music I've now got my two sets of data and then it asks for two more things tails let's simplify just always put the number two okay just do it. Type, uh, yeah, a little complicated. So let's ignore the number three. Um, there are, so that would be either one or two. This is, the summary is, you'll put one if um, the two groups, um, or the two like sets of data that you're comparing were actually like the same people, or the same like sample. So for example, if I got the same people to like listen to music and then the same person like I don't know the next day or something didn't listen to music and I got their results again, I would put one because it's the same person doing the test twice. Um, this is sometimes done in like drug trials where it's like they'll measure something before and then like they'll take the drug that's meant to help them and then measure the, like how they do afterwards. And so this will be like type one, it's a paired t-test. Uh, type two in this case is a um, unpaired test and it means if it's different people. And in, in this example, I just kind of assumed that they were different people. So I tested 14 people with music and another different 14 people without music. So I'm gonna put two for that. Okay, so you put one here if it's the same and two if, it's, uh, if they're different people. So, okay, and let's see what value I get. I get a very small number. Let's reduce the uh, number of uh, decimal points. And I've got 0 0.03. That is a lovely. That's actually what I want because remember 0 0.05 was my magic number. Anything lower than that, and this is significant. This is great. I will now say uh, in my uh, in my write-up, how did I say it? writing in report? That's right. So writing in report. I would say um, a t-test performed on the data produced a p-value of 0 0.03, indicating that the, that uh, there was a significant difference. Great. I think you could also do it like similar to like the way that it before, just putting like uh, p equals 0 0.03 in brackets. But whatever. So that is a good way of putting it. Wonderful. You know, some really really great. One thing that I love about the t-test, the beauty of it is, it is that it even takes into account the sample size. So it even takes into account how many people that you tested. For example, like we know that, um, say, okay, so the difference in like their performance, right? was like however much, maybe it was like 2% in difference. Now 2% may not be very much if you're just comparing like 14 people and another 14 people. But if you were testing like, you know, 14,000 people with another 14,000 people and find a difference of 2%, that's actually pretty significant, right? Because between that many people, you would think it would all average out. So there's like barely any difference. 2% could be really significant in that group. And you can actually tell um, if I removed, let's say the bottom, um, oh, let's say like I, I halved each group. So I removed, maybe it was 12 each, whatever. So I like, deleted that and I deleted that. Um, the p-value is now like much higher. Actually, this has gone down. What was it before? 52. Let's see if I can retain the 52. So if I make this bigger. Okay, there we go. And what number was that before? That was something else. Let's remove that. And then let's make it smaller. Cool. Great. So these two numbers are really similar to what they, they were before, right? I've still got like, you know, a pretty big difference. And yet because I'm only testing like six people versus another six people, I can't be as confident that, you know, they represent the whole, you know, population. And therefore, even though the averages are the same, the p-value actually is not significant anymore. And I mean, if you understand this, you need to appreciate how 
brilliant that is. It even takes into account how big the, the sample sample size is. So like, it's kind of like now saying that if you're just comparing six people to six people, the difference needs to be really big before statistically we can say it's significant. I'm gonna change results here because I can do that. There we go. It needs to be a difference that's like that big before we'll you know give it an acceptable p-value. That's pretty good. Great. My final note with the t-test is that it can only compare, so one limitation is that it can only compare differences between two groups. Yeah, so like in this case, like yes, music, no music. If you're comparing more than two groups, so something like this, where I'm looking at uh, like the increase in temperature of like car colors, and I've got this many car colors, I can't actually use the student's t-test. I need to use something else. Um, that's way more complicated, like an ANOVA. Uh, that's really not, you know, within the realm of this video. So let's not even go there. Um, I could just test, you know, compare one to another, but you can't, like, you know, do one T test between red and black, and then another T test between red and white, another T test between red and green. Firstly, it's silly. You get so many p values, and secondly, it's like, how do you even analyze it? Anyway, all right, that is that. So let's summarize, baby. What did I say? First thing I said was, yo, that's me with a, with a kangaroo selfie. The second thing I said was, it is not enough to just guess if your results are significant. We need statistics. We need actual numbers telling us stuff. And then I said, and then I said, um, if your IV is continuous, such as this one over here, lots of numbers, um, you need to do what's called a Pearson's. Um, correlation coefficient test, which gives you an R value if the R value is close to one or, or one or negative one, so like you know bigger than 0 0.7. Sweet, strong correlation, which is what we have over here. We have a value of 0 0.74. That's fantastic. If it's lower than that, then blah blah blah. I told you how to interpret it over here. If your IV is discrete, we do a student's t test. Bar graph isn't enough. How do I know it's different? We do a student's t test. Um, you know, hit the equal sign, select the cell, hit the equal sign, find your thingy over there, and that gives you a p-value. And the magic number, you know it, you know it, 0 0.05. If it's any lower than 0 0.05, lower, smaller than 0 0.05, it means that the difference is actually significant. Now, a lot of the time, I should say you will be disappointed, even if it's like 0 0.13 or whatever. So, I'm sorry, statistically speaking, it's not strong enough reasons for that. It's got to do with normal distributions and everything. Ah, long story. I'm really simplifying it here, but there you go. Cool. I hope that really helped. So this, um, this hopefully provided you a way um, to, you know, describe the significance of your results using more than just words. Like we now actually have numbers to back our stuff up. Use this in your science reports. Hopefully if your teacher understands what they actually are, it will really impress them. And it'll just add a real like, you know, ro robustness and strength um, to your to your discussion. You can just like des describe it and actually be confident that you know what you're actually talking about. All right, this is Mr. Ting, over and out.